So clearly, we're off to a great start post-Thanksgiving. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Good. And I know everyone here in the room had a fantastic holiday, right? Good. So welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. I'm sure that you are seeing to your left, there's um, a very large uh, quilt there. And so just so you're aware of what this is, this is a panel from the AIDS quilt. And we, along, we, Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles, along with Congregation Cole Ami, the, um, the, who owns this building that we partner with and share with, um, we sponsored this. We co-sponsored bringing this in for World's Aid, World AIDS Day, which is Friday. And so um, that's why it's here. And so you'll hear more about that later today. So just so you know what you're looking at. And um, uh, yeah, I'm going to so that. All right. So we as a spiritual community come together every Sunday morning to um, acknowledge who we are as spiritual beings. We come together to create a safe space is the term that we use for all expressions of life, all ages, all genders, all sizes, all sexual orientation, all beliefs, all religions, all types of people in essence are safe in this environment should they choose to be so based on what we're creating here. And the purpose of this safety is so that they can find their personal self-empowerment through a spiritual awakening. And what we do in that process is create this space by means of speaking what we believe is spiritual truth. It's not, it's not based on religion. It's not based on old ideology. It's an acknowledgement that there is only one power. That power is, doesn't matter what you call it, we call it God, and it exists equally among all sentient beings. We open our service every Sunday morning with a ritual that acknowledges this power within us using the term light. And we use it from the perspective of calling in the light. And in so doing, it gives us each an opportunity to anchor ourselves into the oneness of life itself. And so it's a, a, a ritual that is part musical as well as part um, reading here, illuminating candles, and then a call and response piece to that as well. Um, the practitioner of the day is the individual that leads us through that. I am that practitioner, so I will be leading you through that. And I'd like to welcome one of our practitioners to the Bema to be our illuminator of the day, Jim Evering. Yeah, we don't have to be calm and quiet after all the boogie-woogie that we began with, right? We can be loud and raucous today, as well as our musicians uh, will take us through that piece. So we'll let you begin, all right? Calling in the light Calling in the light Calling in the light of love Calling in the light Calling in the light Calling in the light of love And so this ritual that we perform is indeed called Calling in the Light. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one, all-abiding presence. It's that which we call spirit in our teaching. The purpose of this ritual is to draw into our gathering this morning a conscious awareness of our oneness and the qualities that we possess as complete expressions of the divine. As Jim lights the first candle, he does so for the quality of peace. In this way, we honor our inherent divine state of inner calm, regardless of any seeming chaos that's unfolding around or within us. The second candle is illuminated for the quality of power. That's the quality, that, that's the power that we acknowledge as the energy by which every single thing exists. As we move to the third candle, we light that for the quality of beauty. Beauty in this context is defined 
as a personal expression by which high spiritual qualities are made manifest. Which moves us to the fourth candle, which is for joy, which is that state of being that is excited by the expectancy and the experience of good. Good, in our metaphysical teaching, is a synonym for God which now moves us to the fifth candle, which is for the quality of light. Light is defined as that symbol of divine intelligence, which moves us to the sixth quality. We like that for the quality of life. Life is defined in metaphysical terms as the animating principle of being, that inner something that makes everything live. Moving to the seventh candle, that's for the quality of love. Love is defined as the self-givingness of spirit, the desire of life to express itself by giving of itself, which then moves, we move to the final quality which is the quality of wisdom, which is the concept of unity, is the mystical secret of the ages, and is the key to wisdom. And our last candle is the healing candle. And I ask you to take a moment and just think of anyone that you would like to put into the light. We have several congregants right now that could use that, specifically Dr. Ruby Mills. As well as let's honor those individuals whose names are on this quilt. And as we bring forth the energy and the name or the face of anyone who is in need of healing, we do so so that they may experience the eternal and everlasting love of the divine. I am love. I am peace. In my heart. I am free. I am spirit. I am soul all together we are whole calling in the light 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 Of love And so it is And so it is And so it is That exists within us. Just take a moment and anchor ourselves into the energy of healing. Knowing for ourselves that this time that we share together this morning is indeed invoking healing for each one of us, whether we know what is being called forth to be healed or not. We allow ourselves to revel in this transformative energy of healing, as well as we express for each and every individual on our planet who is in need of healing. And what I mean by that is an awakening for themselves to know who they are as a complete and whole and perfect spiritual being. of letting go of any sense of unworthiness, 
discourse, or any dis-ease within their soul, their psyche, or their being. And that the light of the divine shines forth from within, illuminating a pathway that brings forth a greater experience of peace and power and beauty and joy and light and life and love and wisdom. And so we open ourselves to the journey that we have known as the celebration service today, trusting that we're here by divine appointment and what unfolds is indeed healing for each of us as well. And we let it be by saying together, and so it is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Donia, Andy, Guy, and all of you. Also want to take a moment and say hello to those that are watching us online. Hello, viewers online. I love how for most of you, they get to see the back of your heads when you're waving. Actually, they don't. The camera's actually up here, so they don't really see any of your heads. So they don't know if you're waving or not. But they are waving. I want you to know that up there in camera land. So, so um, we're so happy to have Donya back. She just shared with us as we did our um, circle of prayer this morning before the service starts here that she has been on a journey, correct? She's been on a tour. Say, share it. 15 week tour all through Europe and uh, yeah, England and right. exhausting. Exhausting. <laughs> but fun. So, yes, but fun. So, we're so happy to have her back, and I know that you are as well. I want to give you a little precursor to the first song that she's singing. We had a discussion around it because there was concern, some concern the lyrics might freak you out a bit. And um, you all aren't easily freaked out, huh? Good. All right, good. So let's just trust that was the introduction. No, obviously. So, <laughs> so what she talks about is she wants to sin in the, in the, in the thing. We all know that in um, traditional Latin terminology, sin means missing the mark. That's how we look at it metaphysically, meaning not thinking the highest thought. In traditional religion, we know that it means that you do really bad things. What she's saying in the song is if if doing really bad things is causing really good things to happen on the planet, she wants to do the bad stuff. That cover it? Pretty much. All yeah. right, so <laughs> shin away, sister. It's ironic because I wrote this song about 10 years ago when I saw that things like goodness and kindness were under the gun. And, uh, and now, <laughs> 10 years later, it feels like a premonition has come true. So, yes, I, I'd rather love unconditionally, and if that means sinning, then so be it. Peace is a four-letter word. Love is a selfish act. A smile is now a sign of aggression, and a touch will hurt on impact. A kiss is just plain immoral. A gift could be dangerous. Education is unnecessary, and free thinking creates a fuss. I can see this life coming. I can't imagine this life that we Well, if this is in our future, baby, then dear God, let me sin. Let me sin, let me sin. Let us care for each other in ways that we haven't before. Let me sin, let me sin, let us care for each other. Shake this world down to its core. Let me sin, let me sin, cause the world's gone crazy. Just look at the trouble we're in. I said he's not heavy, he's my brother. So dear Lord, let me sin. Now, music is noise pollution, and art is a waste of time. Faith is now a fallacy, and religion's now a war cry. Technology is freedom. Processed food is now a healthy choice. Domination has become our victory song. Now let us all rejoice. Uh-uh. I can see this life a-coming. I can't imagine the life that we're in. So if this becomes our Baby, and dear God, let me sin. Let me sin, let me sin. Let us love one another in ways that we haven't before. Let me sin, let me sin. Let us care for each other. Wake this world down to its core. Let me sin, let me sin. 
because the world's gone crazy. Just look at the trouble we're in. I said, he's not heavy. He's my brother. So dear God, let me sing. And grace deserves a slap. A hug is now sexual harassment. And the truth is full of crap. Well, clean air, that's just plain greedy. To recycle is merely insane. Nature has become our enemy. And our joy is just mundane. Oh, no, I can see that life coming. Can't imagine the life when. So if this is in our future, baby, then dear God, I'd rather sin. Let me sin, let me sin, let us love one another ways that we haven't before. Let me sin, let me sin, let us care for each other. Shake this one down to its core. Let me sin, let me sin, cause the world's gone crazy. Just look at the trouble we're in. I said, he's not heavy. He's my brother. I said, he's not heavy. He's not. Oh, 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 oh. I, said, I said, he's not heavy. No, he's my brother. I said, he's not heavy. He's my brother. So dear God, dear God, let me All right. Donna Oxford. He ain't heavy. He's my brother, baby. And Guy and Andy. So we did a mic switch during that fantastic song. I could not stand still while he was trying to do it. So we just need to put a piece of tape on us, on me. Yes. Woo. Lord have mercy. He ain't heavy. He's my brother. I love that. That's good. All right. So I'm going to start this morning by reading lyrics. And they are this. Take medicine, take tonic, take pills. But none of them will cure an old grouch of his ills. If you got to take something, take a prescription that's as old as the hills. Take love and kindness. Love and kindness from the nurse, the good-looking nurse. Take love and kindness, and you will never, ever take a turn for the worse. She's good for what ails you when you feel ready to holler and curse. Take, take, take love and kindness, and you'll never, ever take a turn from the worse. Do any of you know that, the lyrics from that song? Hey, what show is it from? The Happy Fella. Hey, hey, I didn't know that that was the happy. The Most Happy Fella, a musical from 1956. Okay. <laughs> That's why you don't remember it. It wasn't yours. But right now it's mine. So, um, <laughs> so here, I'll tell you a little bit about it. The story is a romance between an older man and a younger woman. Remember that piece, everyone? Well, after that, the story gets really convoluted and complicated and very difficult to describe from this particular podium. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I really tried to figure that out, how to tell you it couldn't. Bottom line is, what I'm talking to you about today is love and kindness, not necessarily about the nurse, about love and kindness. Last week, I spoke on an attitude of gratitude. 
and that how when we engage in gratitude, being thankful specifically for the gifts that exist within us individually, and then sharing that in a collective way, that that makes a difference out in the world. We walked out of here last Sunday with a charge to be thankful for the gift of life that exists within each and every one of us, and then to take that gratitude, that gift, and amplify and magnify that which makes each of us unique. And in so doing, sharing that with the world, that it will change the world in front of us. Now, I know for each and every one of you, you did that over the last week, whether you were conscious of doing that or not, because I can feel the vibrational frequency that has shifted on our planet as a result of that. The week before that, I spoke about grace. Grace being that place in our life, that experience in our life, when we consciously align ourselves with the process of creation that is constantly taking place through us. It's about being aware that there truly is only one activity ever taking place, that which we call God or that which is divine. And it matters not, once again, as I said earlier today, what we call it, but raising ourselves to an awareness as we go deeper into our soul to understanding that as we align our minds consciously with the spiritual truth that there's only one activity ever taking place and that we're enough just as we are, what will appear in our life are things that in modern-day terminology we call miracles. But they're not a miracle, it's just actually an awakening of our mind to align ourselves with the goodness that is being made manifest through us at all times. Goodness, as I said earlier, is a synonym for God, meaning that when we align ourselves with the natural flow of life itself, we experience life in a way that brings forth the goodness of life itself. Now, I know for all of you, no matter what your journey was this week and where you spent your Thanksgiving, you have had an experience of goodness, correct? Good. I can sense it in you. I can sense it in you from a place of happiness and peace and lightheartedness. You're enjoying the music and you're smiling, and that's a good thing. Today, I want us to build on an awareness of living from a place of grace, from living from a place of gratitude, of consciously being grateful for what takes place in our life, and then move to a place of consciously being loving and kind in life. You may have forgotten that we declared in this very room in the second week of October that the calendar year from October through the end of September, which is our anniversary in this building, is the year of love and kindness. We made a decision to do that along with Congregation Kol Ami as they move into the next Jewish New Year, which takes place at around the same time. And so this morning, I want us to really readdress that concept of love and kindness and open our minds and our heart and our soul and our being as we move not only into just life itself, but the holidays that are before us, to be purposeful on how we approach life to be purposeful, to choose to approach life from a place of love. Not just in that human emotion, but from the self-givingness of spirit and its desire to create more of itself out of itself, as we talk about every Sunday morning in the ritual. And then kindness is simply a conscious act of really becoming aware of how we're viewing life and participating in it. The definition for kindness is this. It's the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. It's the quality of being friendly, generous, and considerate. And what I invite us to become aware of and purposeful this morning is to not let that simply be a byproduct of life itself, but to be an outward expression of actions and thoughts and beliefs and interactions that we've chosen to be real for us in our life. Synonyms for the word kindness are these, affection, warmth, gentleness, concern, care, consideration, helpfulness, thoughtfulness, unselfishness, selflessness, altruism, compassion, sympathy, understanding, big-heartedness, benevolence, benignity, friendliness, hospitality, neighborlessness, neighborliness, generosity, magnanimity, and charitableness. Those are a lot. That's a lot, right? Imagine if we just chose one or two to focus on over the next week. That if we chose to be thoughtful and unselfish, what would our life look like? 
Not placing judgment on ourselves if we haven't been thoughtful or that if we've been selfish up until this moment. Not even placing judgment on ourselves as the week goes by if we find ourselves being selfish. But in that moment, stopping and asking ourselves, how can I be unselfish in this moment? In so doing, with the goal being to be kind to myself and to others. That to choose to allow the self-givingness of spirit, that power within me, to give of itself, which is its nature, by creating more of itself out of itself. And as I choose to be selfishlessness, selfish, unselfish, we'll go with that word in the moment, then in so doing, what is being made manifest through me? What's the ripple effect that can take place when I choose to live from that perspective? I think if we chose one or two or three of those, that indeed what would take place is that we would be making a difference on our planet. Would you agree? Yes. yes. For many years in this beloved center, which was started by Dr. David Walker and some of you here in the room, the vision statement for this center was making a difference. And every Sunday morning, we received the bulletin that said it on there. When the monthly newsletter went out, every piece of, every document that was attached to the religious, Los Angeles Church of Religious Science said, making a difference. And today's the day that we get the opportunity to carry that vision forward, should we choose. To not let it be some overwhelming concept of like, oh my God, how am I going to make a difference in the world? but by simply taking a breath and realizing that by being conscious of who you are, by being conscious of what you are as a spiritual being, and by being conscious of the power that exists within, that you get to choose to make a difference, you're already starting that process. That it really is a simple act, and that kindness matters. Kindness matters in life. Now, I'm sure for you, much like me, I've wondered at times, well, why is kindness so important? Would you agree? You know inherently that it's important, but I think it's important for us to question that at times. And has there ever been a time where you've thought in life, why does it matter that I be kind to someone else? Is there a time where positivity often takes a backseat to negativity or whining or complaining or bitching or moaning, whatever the case may be in life on a daily basis. And we stop to ask ourselves with everything going on in the world today, why does kindness matter? Well, I'm going to tell you why it matters. It matters because we are one. Think about that for a second. We are one. And not just in this room. The spiritual truth that we are one is either true or it's not. Meaning that we are one with all of life itself. Now, I don't know about you guys. I came from um, a Southern Baptist teaching years ago, and that was not at all what was taught to us. The oneness that we were the, were the ones that um, were not sinning or getting forgiveness for it once it happened, and then there were the rest, Right? And much like you, I spent a good deal of my time in the rest category. It brought me great pleasure. Um, But the spiritual truth is we are all one. We are one. I think I've shared with you before that the first time I went to Malawi when we started our school building project there, we, we were out in this field in the middle of literally what seemed as to be nowhere. There were probably, I don't know, somewhere between 1,200 and 1,400 children and teenagers all running through this field. There were people everywhere. There was activities going on everywhere. There was this huge celebration unfolding because for the first time, a safe structure for education had been provided for these children. And this particular school itself had 1,200 children registered in it. 1,200 children. That's a lot, all right? And so as this chaos is ensuing, there were dances, take, dances taking place and speeches being made, and it all was just going on and on and on and on and on. And I was considered a dignitary because I was the head of the Malawi School Project, and I had 14 people I had brought with me from America. And sitting to my left was an elected official there, and they brought out their living room chairs, and all this grandiosity was taking place relative to the environment itself. And the guy keeps handing, grabbing my arm, and he reaches over and grabs my arm, and he goes, Reverend, Reverend, Reverend. I'm like, what? 
And he says, are you ready? And I said, for what? And he goes, you're speaking next. (laughs) And I was caught off guard and felt a bit unworthy in that moment. And I didn't quite know what to say. And when I stood up to speak with a translator, I looked at all these faces looking at me. And I thought, what do I have to say to them that will resonate with them? I knew how to raise the money. I knew how to build the schools and all that. But it was how to speak that would resonate in a way. And I started telling them of the story of how it came to be that we raised the first amount of money to build the schools, which what they were getting and what and not. And at one point I said to them, and one of the things that we believe in the teaching that we practice from what the time was um, Religious Science International was that we, I said it just like this, we are one. And when I said we are one, immediately there was a groundswell of energy. And I started chanting with them, we are one, and they were chanting it back with me. I share that story with you to remind you that indeed we are one. That as humanity, that that reality transcends any belief system, it transcends any geography, it transcends language, it transcends all aspects of conditions in life. It is a spiritual truth. And so for you and I to engage that in a way that's going to make a difference on our planet, it's important for us to choose to be kind to all aspects of humanity. This weekend I was watching something on um, my computer and this story popped up that was just so beautiful. And I'm going to share it with you because I think it speaks to where all of us have an opportunity in life to awaken ourselves, as I've said before. Um, Would you guys agree that there are moments when we forget that we are connected to humanity before us? Of course there is, and it's great that we have a day, um, the third or fourth Thursday, I believe it is, of the year where we say thank you, but that's not enough to really fine-tune our spiritual muscular tour of being connected to the oneness of humanity. And this video showed that there was a man, a homeless man, where a young man walked up to him, and he was approached by this young man and engaged him in conversation. He then offered this man, the homeless man, $100. The homeless man was overwhelmed that this gentleman was actually going to give him this money. And what he said to the guy was, that's the most amount of money I've ever seen. And after a bit of dialogue, the homeless man accepted the money. And unbeknownst to him, the gentleman that had given it to him was participating in an experiment and had a cameraman. And he started following the man who he had given the money to, uh, not telling him that they had a camera on him. And the man went into a liquor store. And as he went into the liquor store, of course, the cameraman and both the man who had given him the money immediately assumed that he was going to go in, buy a bunch of booze, and come out and get get drunk. Excuse me. And uh, and, uh, (laughs) we are one. Okay. um, Came out. They were grumbling, of course. And you could tell that they truly did think this guy was going off to get to have a good time. And as they followed him, once again unaware, they saw him where he had this big bag. And it was the bag he'd had before, but it was now filled with stuff. And so, to their surprise, he went to a park. And as he got to the park, he started pulling stuff out of his bag and handing it to people. And what he was pulling out and handing to them was food. And he was feeding his brothers and his sisters. Not biological brothers and sisters, his humanity, familial brothers and sisters. And after he went to several tables, the gentleman came up to him that had given him the money and said, I need to apologize to you. I want to apologize to you because I had this assumption that you were now taking this money to go feed your addiction of alcoholism. And yet that's not what happened. So will you accept my apology? And the guy said yes. And so he reached in his pocket and pulled out another $100 bill. The guy was like, no, 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 I can't take the money. And he said to him, this is for you. I want you to use this for yourself. And he said, if you don't mind me asking, how did you end up being homeless? And his response was this. He goes, my mother and my father had gotten sick. And so I quit my job and moved from where I was living to move in with them. As I moved in with them, my father got sicker much quicker and died. And so I took my savings and paid for his funeral. Two weeks after that, my mother died. So I took the remainder of my money and paid for her funeral, and now I was broke. Shortly after that, the apartment that I was living in, they sold the building to become a condo, and anyone that wasn't on the lease was evicted. 
I had no money, nowhere to live, was in a new town, and grieving the loss of my parents. He said, you know, you never know what goes on in people's life to cause them to have the experience that they do. I share that story with you today because we never know what's going on in the life of one of our spiritual brothers and sisters. I don't use the term spiritual brother and sister from the perspective of us sitting in this room together or anybody that walks into this building to connect with source. I use the term spiritual brother and sister meaning all that have spirit within them that we're connected to. And the truth is it does not matter what the experiences were to give cause to the conditions of their life. What matters is, as being one with nature, whose nature is to give, that our responsibility to expand ourselves on the awareness level of who we are as spiritual beings is to give. It's to give without any attachment as to how it comes back. Why does it matter that we live from a place of kindness? It matters because of one simple thing. It's called the golden rule. It's important for us to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And the next piece of that is because we are spiritual beings living in a spiritual universe governed by spiritual law, which means that we are aware that there are spiritual laws that exist out there, and we experience them to the degree that we become conscious and awake of them. Meaning that as we understand that is as we give, it returns to us. It's called the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity is also known as the law of sowing and reaping, which allows us to receive in life because of what we give or what we do. This morning, I encourage you and I invite you to get clear on what it is you want to sow in life. What is it you want to sow? Is it more peace? Is it greater happiness? Is it giving of your financial abundance in a, in a new way? Is it simply by just using your energy of giving to others through knowing that they too are peace and power and beauty and joy and light and life and love? Is it by gaining a new understanding of love itself and then giving that to others as you walk Mother Earth? Dr. David Hawkins says that love is so critical. However, it's misunderstood to be an emotion. What it actually is is a state of awareness. It's a way of being in the world, a way of seeing oneself and others. He says simple kindness to oneself and all that lives is the most powerful transformational force of all. That the simple decision to be kind, forgiving, and compassionate to all life in all of its expressions, including oneself, is a scalpel that is capable of removing the major impediments to spiritual progress. What he's telling us here is that the simple decision for us to be kind and to be forgiving and to be compassionate to all life in all of its expressions, including the self, is a scalpel. Scalpel. In other words, it's what allows us to remove from us anything that's blocking us from living life in alignment with our divine nature more often and more often and more often. And I know that each and every one of us, whether we're in this room or you're watching online, we are here today because that is our objective. Our objective, whether we know how to verbalize it or not, is to know more and more and more and to live from a place more and more and to live in alignment more and more that all there is, is God. That's why we're here. Because in so doing, we bring forward a vibrational frequency of the qualities of the divine. In so doing, we give in that way without an attachment. And then that which comes back to us sometimes seems surprising. And yet as we fine-tuned our spiritual musculature, as we've really worked on our consciousness and getting to know who we are as spiritual beings, we're not surprised. We know it's just simply that rhythm of life itself. I've made a commitment to myself to be in meditation every single morning for 20 minutes. 
non-negotiable for me. And it's been really challenging at times to walk out the door with the dog, Rachel and Ann, my neighbors see me sometimes, walk out with Sadie wagging her tail and running and all that and trying to get it set up. But I do it, and I share that with you this morning because of my personal experience. I'm, I want to start my day being aligned with spiritual truth. And I'm really not the kind that's going to sit down and cross my legs and do five steps of spiritual mind treatment. That's just probably not going to work for me. However, I am receptive to speaking and hearing spiritual truth. And I share that with you because this morning as I got up, and I get up on Sunday mornings around 5 o'clock, and I get prepared for today, and I get out there as soon as the sun comes up, and I'm walking out the door this morning, and I jump on YouTube, and I knew I was speaking about kindness, and I spoke to Siri through YouTube. I'm like, meditation on love and kindness. And up popped this meditation, and I hit play. And it was brilliant. And I want to share it with you this morning as I shared it with those that were in the meditation this morning. And it's four simple statements. And it's this. May I be well. May I be happy. May I be peaceful. May I be loved. I believe if we can approach life from the perspective of knowing that we are well, knowing that we are happy, not just from a human emotional place, but allowing joy to rise up and express through us. May we be peaceful, and may we be loved. And then not let it stop there. Then own that for ourselves. And then know for the individuals that are before us, may they be happy. May they be well. May they be peaceful, and may they be loved. This morning in our meditation, and the one I did earlier this morning, it really guided us to bring forward the faces of individuals in our life that we want to know that for. And then bring it forth for those that are in distress in life, that do need healing. Let's know for them that they are well, and that they're happy, and they're peaceful, and they're loved. And then we close the meditation upstairs with bringing forward into our mind's eye anyone that we know that is ready to make transition to the other side, or anyone that's ready to make transition to the other side that we don't know. Why is it important to do that? Because we're one. Because we're one. And we know that we can use our minds to invoke healing. And so by doing that, there is a shift that occurs. And so this morning, what I want for you and for you to want for yourself is to declare for yourself that kindness matters, that love matters, and that you're going to do your part to not only manifest it in your life as an experience, but you're going to consciously do that for others. That you're going to know with every fiber of your being that they are indeed well, no matter the circumstances that's going on in their life. And you're going to be less judgmental as you walk this planet. And that for each and every individual that you know that deep within them there is happiness. And it's rising up to make itself known. And that there's peace. And peacefulness is radiating on our planet. And most importantly, that they're loved. Because I know that's true for each one of you, whether you know it for yourself or not. And I know it's true for me. And by living from that place, we will indeed make the difference that was declared when this spiritual community came together years ago. The vision for us is to make a difference, and it begins with me, and it begins with you. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. <coughs> Welcome back. Do we need a disclaimer on the next one? Uh, no disclaimer, but no. I will say that uh, this Thanksgiving <coughs> I spent with my friends and family, and I don't know about you all, but I have a crazy uncle, and I have a dysfunctional sister-in-law, and I have an overbearing mother, and I have a, a, a weird kind of friend that's kind of always around and a little annoying. Um, but my cousin got up and stood in front of everybody and said, you know, we may not have it all together, but when we're together, we have it all. So I wrote a song about it. It goes like this.
people say that you stand in my way. I could be living on a bed of ease. Well, still others too say I'm no good for you. Cause you let me do just as I please. Well, dysfunction comes easy, but you know how to please me. So I learned to look the other way. Sometimes life is hard and we're not dealt all the cards But we won't let that stand in our way We may not have it all together And our problems might not seem so small Well, we may not have it all together But together we have it all That's right my family is crazy, and your friends all are lazy, but we learn to love them through and through. Well, your mother's unsympathetic, she's unapologetic, but I knew that when I said I do. Well, we're broke, tired, and hungry, and we ain't got no money, and we can't do things the way we should. Our lives may be flawed, but you've got to thank God for the bad things as well as the good. We may not have it all together, and our problems might not seem so small. Well, we may not have it all together, but together we have it all. And our problems might not seem so small You know, we may not have it together But together we have it all Oh baby, oh baby I got you, you got me Together we're family Oh baby, oh baby Oh Together we have, together we have it all. Yes, I like that. Did you write that? Fantastic. Thank you. Just taking that in for a second. Fantastic. Whew. We may not have, we, not have we may not have it all together, but together, baby, we got, we have it all. So true. Cool. So let's have our ushers come forward, please. This is your opportunity to give of your financial good to support the Center for Spiritual Living Los Angeles. Your opportunities for giving would be cash, check, or credit card. If you'd like to give by credit card, you can do so with Reverend Edward in the back. How about a big round of applause? We have Reverend Edward back. As well as um, you can go on our app in the App Store and click on that, and that'll give you the opportunity to give. As well as in our, on our website, click on, which is csl-la.org, click on Home and Donate, and those links have all been um, repaired. So. so take out your conscious giving and place it close to your heart if you like, as you bless it, and that's the purpose of that. And join me in our conscious giving affirmation. Conscious giving heals all fear. It awakens and enlivens my awareness that I am one with an abundant universe. So I give with love and know and know that I know 
it returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Tis the gift to be simple. Tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be. And when we find ourselves in the place just right, will be in the valley of love and delight when true simplicity is gained to bow and to bend we shan't be ashamed so turn turn will be our delight till by turning turning we come round right Beautiful. The stylistic Andy Belling. Love it. Yes, right? Yay is right. So a big thank you to you all for being here this morning, satiated in Turkey and tryptophan. Happy to have you here. Um, a big thank you to, um, of course, Andy. Oh, there, so he disappeared. <laughs> it's going to be a puppet show now. I love it. He disappeared. So Andy Belling and Gaia Zule, so happy to have you here. And a huge thank you to Donna Oxford. Donna, if anyone wants to acquire your music, how can they do so? They can either do so through my website, which is D-O-N-A, like Donna with one M, Oxford.com. Or uh, I, do I have any with me? Oh, no, I don't have any with me. I forgot to bring them. But you can get it through the website or on uh, iTunes. Great. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. And so our practitioner today, moi, and our illuminator, Jim Evering, a huge thank you. Yes. A big thank you to Bob and Jesus and um, Rolando and Irwin for setting up today. Thank you all. And working through our audio challenges. So let me give you some updates on what's taking place. Um, Wednesday, we are continuing with our Wednesday morning meditation, as well as the Tai Chi class is taking place in here Wednesday. Rachel's teaching that. It's fantastic. There again, if, you have t if you're available during the day, come join us. It's really... Um, it's, it's wonderful, quite wonderful. Um, Thursday evening is an event here with um, Kelsey Copeland's husband, Farley, who is um, a food critic, for lack of a better term. And there is uh, an event that's taking place for Congregation Cola Me that we've been, we've been invited to be a part of. And it's for anyone under the age of 40. And so you're welcome to come in. There's a couple of you in here, right? I know there's two, <laughs> there's two, um, three, two, uh, three. three, anyway, you'll <laughs> so just know that that's taking place and you'll see information on that in our newsletter and if you have questions, ask me, I would love to share that with you. Um, next Sunday, um, I will be reading names um, that you have submitted, if you choose to do so, of anyone that's been affected or passed on by AIDS. So we will do an acknowledgement of the quilt next week and do a name reading. So if there's any names you'd like to submit for that, um, please feel free. There's a list by Edward. You can write those down or you can email those to me. I'll also remind you of that in the um, e-newsletter. Um, just acknowledging that on world, that's taking place for us next Sunday, but World AIDS Day is next Friday. Um, a huge thank you to those of you that volunteered over thanks or on Thanksgiving. If you're in the room and you did that, raise your hand, please. Thank you. I hear a good time was had by all for all of you. Yes. Also, um, acknowledgement that we donated 244 pairs of tube socks for the tube sock drive. So thank you for that. Which leads us now to the toy drive. So the toy drive is starting. Um, we'd like to have you, we're serving two, the LA Family Housing is serving 200 families and we're taking in any unwrapped new toys for babies, boys and girls ages one to four, teens 14 and up would like gift cards. Um, and so you can see Reverend Lenore if there are any questions on that. We will be um, collecting those throughout the week when we're here as well as Sunday and that will, delivery will take place on December 14th, correct? All right, great. If you're not receiving the email list, the email during the week, please sign up back with Reverend Edward. I think that's it, any questions? Everybody good? All right, good. 
So we may do a dine, a, a, an experience for food for 60 and over as well, so just know that. <laughs> it was a whole conversation around it, and I said, no one can get their feelings hurt because we do the 60-plus class, and I didn't put the event together. I'm just sharing information. All right, so... Um, but wouldn't it be fantastic if uh, we started doing events like that and we did all of a sudden, don't be shaking your head no, and start attracting in some people that are 40 and under? Maybe even five of them? Okay, yeah, so we are one, all ages, right? All right, so let's close. There are, there's a big platter of fruit out there that was cut up for you. Um, so avail yourself of that, and then there's... Um, other stuff. Let's close. Okay. Let's close with knowing that this experience today has been a wonderful experience. It's been a sharing in community of an awakening to our truth as spiritual beings. We are each empowered to know who we are as divine beings as a result of that which has transpired today that we have heard something that has sparked within us this greater awareness, whether it be through word or song or music or prayer. That we covenant and commit to ourselves today that as we move forward in life as life, that we're kinder to ourselves and to others. We're more loving to ourselves and others. And we give the power of spirit within us permission to create more of itself, out of itself, through us, more and more and more and more in a way that we recognize more and more and more and more. This is a result of our fine-tuning our consciousness. And so we revel in that which is being brought forth into experience in our life because we know that we're doing the work. Not because it's laborious, but because it's a process of awakening. That's why we're here. So we let it be. We let it be as we say together. And so it is. Thank you. Wonderful. Have a great Sunday. Hope to see many of you throughout the week.